Hello, welcome to Trig Substitution Example 4 video where we are um, working through the different types and I wanted to do an example uh, of type 3 where we have an integral that is of the format square root of x squared minus a squared. Okay, I um, also want to do an example of one that was an indefinite integral. I'm just interested in knowing what the antiderivative of this function is. And so, to do that, we're going to use trig substitution. The very first step is always to make sure you choose the correct trig sub. Because we're in this format of x squared minus a squared, we let x equal a secant theta, with the value of a being 12 here. Upon letting x equal 12 secant theta, everything comes from that. Make sure you always pick the correct trig sub to start out with. Okay, in the second step, your job then is to substitute for everything. I like to color code it. Uh, there are three different terms inside of the integral. We have to sub for every single one of those terms. The square root, the x in the denominator, and also dx. And then after that, make sure you cancel if there's anything to be canceled. Um, I like to find what dx is first so I don't forget it. Um, so if x is 12 secant theta, then dx is 12 secant theta tan theta. Right, secant derivative is secant tan. So that will be part of the numerator. The square root is a tan theta. Uh, we're, we're assuming that we're dealing with x's that are bigger than a. So we're going to just be able to write exactly 12 tan theta. I don't think I have that written on there. So let's go ahead and say it. I'm going to say x is bigger than 12. That allows us to be able to just say that the radical becomes a tan theta. If we were dealing with x's that were smaller than 12, then we'd have to use um, the radical become a negative 12 tan theta. Small technicality, but here we go. So with that, then uh, we know how to replace the radical. If you don't remember, just go ahead and plug in. You'll see how it cancels out. Okay, um, and so uh, lastly, there's an x in the denominator, but we already know what x is, 12 secant theta. So we can take these three different parts, color-coded, the red and blue in the numerator, the green in the denominator, and throw them into an integral now that only has theta in it. We've correctly substituted, and now we have to cancel. There's a 12 secant theta in the numerator, and there's a 12 secant theta in the denominator. Those guys cancel out. What are we left with? 12 tangent squared theta. You can pull the 12 outside. And we're supposed to be able to get to an integral that we could, we could find the antiderivative of. We introduced this trig with the goal in mind of being able to integrate the trig once it's all in there. Can we do it? In step three, our job is to integrate. Can we integrate tangent squared? Do we know off the top of our head what function has tangent squared as this derivative? It's not very obvious. Um, but what we need is a trig identity. Like we saw in an earlier example. Um, the trig identity is the fact that uh, 1 plus the tan squared is secant squared. So tan squared can be replaced by secant squared minus 1. Why would you want to do that? Why is now... Why are you now in a position where you could integrate when you couldn't before. Like, why can we readily tell what the antiderivative of secant squared, mi secant squared theta minus one is? And the answer to that is that, uh, yeah, what, what function has secant squared as this derivative? We know that. And then we can always find the antiderivative of one with respect to theta It's just gonna be theta. What function has secant squared as its derivative? It's tangent. And so the antiderivative in theta is tan theta minus theta. With the 12 on the outside, this is an indefinite integral. We can go ahead and throw the plus C on now. But we can't give this as our answer. The, the question came to us in terms of x. We were asked for the antiderivative in that variable. So we have to trade back. In the other examples, they were all definite integrals, so we had options. Here, there's no limit switch. There's no limits to switch. We don't have an option. 
the only option we have, uh, we don't have two options. We only have one um, course of action here, which is to use the reference triangle to change these thetas back into X's. Okay. All right, great. On the next slide, let's do that. So we have the original integral, the trig sub that we chose, and it should say 12, not, and wow, that's totally wrong. I'm sorry, 12 secant theta. That's probably a cut in place mistake I didn't catch. Uh, X equals 12 secant theta. And with that trig substitution, our integral became integral on tan squared theta with a 12 outside. Substituting in and integrating. This is our antiderivative in the wrong variable. Now we're going to use the reference triangle to find out what this is in terms of x. All right. Okay, great. What is the reference triangle all about? It is all about using the original trig sub, 12 secant theta, solving for the trig, and that represents a ratio of sides on a right triangle. Throw theta as the base angle. Uh, secant is the flip of, of uh, cosine. So if, if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then secant's hypotenuse over adjacent. Your hypotenuse should be x. Your adjacent should be, should be 12. The missing side is your opposite side, and it's going to be the radical x squared minus 144. You could do Pythagorean theorem if you, if you don't believe it or if you wanted to work it out for yourself. All right, so we have to sub for tan theta which we know is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be the radical x squared minus 144 over 12. But we also have to sub for theta. And the way we get theta is by taking the original trig sub, x equals 12 sec theta, dividing by 12, isolating the trig, and taking the inverse trig, in this case, arc secant. And so theta is the arc secant of x over 12. That's going to be the replacement to theta. The replacement to tangent in red is that um, that fraction there. The plus c is on the end. The 12 is still outside. We've done it. We, we, we finished the question. We now have it represented in terms of x. It wasn't obvious at first, but the guy who, the function who has this, uh, the, the antiderivative of this function is exactly this guy. Multiply 12 in. Okay, and the only way we could do it is by trig sub. Okay, all right, great. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help, and um, see you in the next video.